Hey guys, what's going on? My name is Chris and I'm your dad next door. And today we're doing a quick microphone test here. And we are uh, just picked up this Sam, Sam, Samson, not to be confused with Samsung, Samson Q2U microphone. And we are putting it up against our Mayano AO4 microphone here today. Uh, the Mayano is something I have been streaming with for about two and a half, three months. And I wanted to pick up this Samson Q2U um, for a few different reasons. And I'll explain those a little bit later in the video here. But uh, this, I want to become my new streaming mic. So I wanted to create this video to kind of determine if this is going to stand up to the, uh, stand up to the grade that I require based off of my Mayano microphone. So the first thing that we're going to explain is that all audio except otherwise identified is going to be raw. There's no processing, equalizer, gates, or anything like that applied. This is just ambiance and whatever the microphone does pick up. Um, this, uh, both of these are powered by USB. Although the Q2U can be powered by an XLR, it does have an XLR port on the back of this thing. Um, I will not be doing that in this test here today. I want it to be a fair comparison to the USB Mayano microphone. That way we were just kind of going off of those same baselines there um, and how they were powered. To cover a few details about the Samsung microphone here. We do have an on and off switch on the upper portion of the microphone here. Uh, this does work for both USB and XLR modes. So if you needed to turn the mic on or off, you could do that. It does have volume adjustments um, for if you are using this in USB mode, it does actually have the opportunity to act as a USB sound card. So you can plug a headphone jack right in here in the back. There's a headphone port here, a three and a half millimeter down in the bottom. And this volume control will control the audio for the headphones as well as system audio, and I'll touch on that a little later on. Um, it does come with a windscreen, which I'm currently not using, and it does come with this uh, this headphone mic uh, stand connector uh, or holder, so you can apply it to the stands as you're using them. Typically, you'll use something like this, and you'll use an arm like this in a streaming setup, but you know, today I just wanted to have these on the stand so they'd be a little easier, a little easier to hold in position right next to each other. Now, for some additional information about why I selected these two microphones to compare is that both of these fall right in that $50 price range, which we're trying to find uh, to best optimize your streaming setup. So the Mayano came in right at like $56, but it included a boom arm, shock mount, etc. cetera. Um, this Samsung Q2U came right in at $49.99 with the included accessories that I have here today. But again, with that XLR option, you have the ability to grow into an interface setup if you ever wanted to. Um, so that's a, that's a huge, that's a huge plus for this microphone as well. Um, I have heard, and again, I won't be testing here today, but I have heard that um, there is there is a little bit of a different sound quality just be when you're using an interface because you're you're going that route and you're using you're letting the interface do the preamps instead of using the onboard USB B card or the onboard USB processing. Um, but other than that, I think uh, I think so far this microphone's been great. Discussing polar patterns, both of these microphones use a very, very similar polar, pa uh, polar pattern, which is cardioid, and that it was, again, another reason why I selected to choose these. So the cardioid polar pattern is designed to just cover what we'll say almost like a 180 effect. Basically, everything from the backside and straight back should not be covered by the microphone, but everything kind of in a in a in a giant wave formation around it or almost like a bubble from the from the front over. So I'm going to just basically move my head around this way and you guys will notice that I should be tapering off. I should be getting a little quieter. I should be kind of uh, not as loud. I, it's it's going to it's going to definitely change the audio quality as you walk around the microphone here and as you're uh, adjusting where you're listening to. Um, so that's going to be a big thing, you know, as you're kind of going through that process, whatever setup you have. Um, you need to make sure you, t you take care of that. As far as the address is what they call it, the Q2U is a front address. I believe they call it a top address, sorry. Um, a top address. So I speak directly into the microphone. That's why it is facing straight towards me. The Mayano is a front address. So I'm actually speaking into the side of the microphone. The top of it would be right here. So you, you have that front address. Basically, there is a uh, condenser coil kind of sitting right inside of the microphone here that, that's waiting for all that vibration. Whereas the, Sam, uh, the Samson is, you know, has that coil kind of facing this way. 
Again, the Mayano is a condenser microphone, so there is an electric coil in there that takes phantom power. In a USB environment, that 5-volt signal is typically enough. I, I've, I have yet to see one where you need more than a standard a standard 5-volt USB setup. Um, the Samson is a dynamic microphone, so it does not require any phantom power. Even if you go to an XLR, no phantom power, kind of nice. Um, and one thing that's nice about that is they, they have this feature called the noise floor, where since the Mayano is constantly looking for sound and it's constantly generating a signal of some sort, the Mayano kind of has a higher, it makes a little bit of a higher pitch sound in a totally quiet environment. Um, typically room ambiance and stuff, you're not going to hear that, but you know, you may see it when you're setting up different, uh, equalizers or noise gates or compressors or different things like that. Um, the Samson does a really good job at not even being picked up at all when I'm not talking on my meters and levels. It just kind of tapers off until it actually hears the sound that it needs to input into this. So the Samson does a, a pretty good job with that being a dynamic microphone. It waits for that signal to arrive. So for this next portion of this uh, test, we will be reading a line from Dreadful Axe, The Eddie Dickens Story by Philip Ardaw. It's a little, little book I picked up off my kid's bookshelf here that we're going to take a read out of. Let's go. The man who came into the cell with the peeler was as wide as he was tall and wore a very loud check suit. Of course, check suits can't really make a noise, except, of course, of material rubbing against material. But this was the kind of suit with checks so loud that if they could have talked, they would have shouted. It was the sort of suit that, when years later television was invented, made the pictures go fuzzy. Even when the man was standing stock still, the checks on his suit seemed to be zinging all over the place. The man who came into the cell with the peeler was as wide as he was tall and wore a very loud check suit. Of course, check suits can't really make a noise, except, of course, of material rubbing against material. But this was the kind of suit with checks so loud that if they could have talked, they would have shouted. It was the sort of suit that when years later, television was invented, made the pictures go fuzzy. Even when the man was standing stock still, the checks on his suit seemed to be zinging all over the place. So the last test that we're going to perform here today is just a little bit of a distance test. For those who don't know, typically um, condenser microphones get that nice, warm kind of glow when you're, re when you're right here, right up against the microphone. And that's what they're kind of known for. Um, a lot of uh, recording studios use them in the booth and things like that for when singing and different kind of stuff like that. Um, dynamics are typically more when you're trying to be more focused on just a small portion of the audio and you don't have this big isolation room and you're trying to pick up ambience and, and harmonics and different kinds of things like that. So they're, they're more designed to be, I don't want to call it shotgun style, but they're more designed to pick up better noises or a bit or better, better more at range. Whereas the, uh, you get the best sound quality typically from a condenser when you're nice and up and close to it. So what I'm going to do here right now is I'm just going to continue to step backwards as I continue to speak. And we're going to see what the difference in the sound quality is as I continue to step back. So, so we're about two feet from the microphones now, and then we're just going to continue to move backwards as we continue to go. And you should see that that, uh, that condenser typically would normally fall off faster. Um, and it would sound kind of hollow and a lot, a lot quicker than the, uh, than the uh, dynamic would. So we just want to kind of see if that's, that holds true in this scenario as well. So right now I'm about, I would say about three and a half feet from the microphone. I don't have much more room to move back, uh, but this is about as far as I would go. Of course, in a natural recording environment, you're typically never going to be that far away from your microphone when you're doing streaming or podcasting or anything like that. You're going to be up close like this usually. So that's just a very uh, exact. Oh, one last thing before we go and finish out this video here today. I would say that I would have really liked to have seen the uh, Samson microphone come with some type of shock mount. Um, typically, I don't like any microphone that doesn't have one. Um, the Mayano, even on this, you know, the, the taps are kind of aggressive still, but I don't know if you guys will be able to notice a difference when I'm tapping this arm and kind of making some different noises. You're probably going to hear a lot of boom out of anything the Samsung is playing, um, and it's just a really, really light tap on the arm. So anytime you're playing on a keyboard or you, you, if you have your microphone mounted to a desk, like with one of these type of 
of arms, um, you're going to pick up a lot of feedback if you don't have some type of shock mount. So please make sure that if you are going to use this microphone for that type of scenario, get a shock mount for it. That's, that's just a staple requirement for any type of microphone that's mounted to a surface that you're going to be interacting with. So here again, we have a quick final recap. We have two USB microphones. One is condenser, one is dynamic. Um, the both use a cardioid pattern. In this scenario, we are trying to keep them as simple as possible. Both have really close frequency response, really close signal to noise ratio, uh, really close max SPL. So I, I, I really liked this example to try to compare the two. So we could just kind of get apples to apples kind of comparison on this. And uh, yeah, you guys will have to let me know what you think. Hey guys, I hope you like this comparison and this review and that this was helpful to you and giving you an idea of what type of microphone you're going to be wanting to look forward to in the future. If you have any additional questions, comments, or concerns about this video, please leave them down in the... Uh, I'll do that comment section of this video um and additionally i have links to my twitch and twitter you can always reach out to me at either of those locations down in the description of the video as well or they should be popping up right here on the bottom of this window here at some point during the uh, tail end of this video so i hope you enjoyed watching this i hope this comparison was really good for you and i hope you enjoy the rest of your evening thanks for watching my name is chris i'm your dad next door we'll see you next time